Welcome to the OSRS podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I am Mitt Cow, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Rakes, as always. And hello, it's Rice Cup again. So, today, I don't feel like this man needs any introduction. Pretty much every single person in the old school RuneScape community knows who this guy is. This myth of a man, this legend, Sir Pugger. Thank you very much for coming on. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks for having me. That was uh, quite an introduction. Hey, well, you deserve it, dude. You deserve it. <laughs> I mean, you're you're like a pillar in this community of busting bots and exploiting stuff like that and figuring out You've the deep dark place. secrets. You now, have. <laughs> I, I do gotta you. say, we might we might have viewers that are not from the RuneScape community. So, Puggers, if you don't mind, real quick, could you just kind of uh, go over an overview of what you do in the community? Definitely, yeah. So basically, RuneScape's in-game currency uh, translates to real value on a black market that is supposed to be against the game rules. And so people create robots to play the game to get the currency to then sell for real money. And so I guess the point of my channel basically right now is to find those robots and try to break them or report them to the de the devs of the game, stuff like that. Um, and I guess a secondary part of my content is running esport esque challenges, um, well, competitions where people compete for an hour to do various things, and then I try to reward them with gold. I like those. I like those challenges a yeah, lot. I, man. I tried one of those, like the um, like make make the most money in, in an hour on a new account. <laughs> what was yeah. what was the winner? Like twenty mil or something? It was like ten mil? Some crazy amount for the hour. It was five mil, right? It was like a feral scepter, right? Oh yeah, um, I like I've done three or four different money making ones. Um, yeah, live as long, as long as it's not solo mission winning every time. I yeah. Approve. yeah, I like. I it. heard he's next ahead of the competition. <laughs> he's way too good. <laughs> it's either yeah. solo mission or the summit. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Man, Crazy. I mean, when you're chucking up that much DP on the line, though, like it makes it interesting. Like when you do one of those, how many entries do you get? It depends on the challenge. So some of them, I think the most was maybe like 80 or 90, which is a lot for like people recording a full hour and sending you it. But I think a couple of them, I only got like 14 or 15 entries. And so it's like, oh, oh, wow. I mean, it's a billion it's... GP and like, only 15 man. people entered. But <laughs> really yeah. easy chance. Damn. Damn, almost a 10 percent chance to win. <laughs> yeah. I might have to try that next time. I was like, dude, I bet. Hundreds yeah. of people are entering. Now I know it's not a lot of people. Hey, it's also good exposure. Time. It's good, go True. good exposure. I think Solo, you know, he's a he's a great marketer, so he knows mm -hmm. opportunity when he sees me. Like, <laughs> <agree with> <laughs> plus, if you win, you can make a whole YouTube video out of it. I think Solo Mission's done that a couple of times with his runs. Exactly, marketing. Yeah. He's genius marketer. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, so we'll do some Q and A with Pugger real quick. Um. What is the just? I'll I'll start. What what's the biggest bot farm that you have found so far in your findings? Or the craziest? How about that? <laughs> yeah. So the biggest is definitely the mobile Zolra bots I found. I mean, I didn't know they were mobile bots, but um, I was hopping through worlds and I realized there were like ten to fifteen Zolra bots on at once. They all looked the same, um, and I was like, "There's no way. This is like one of the most watched spots in the game for bots. Why aren't they getting banned?" And I reported it to Jagex, and they were like, oh, yeah, our system wasn't picking this up because they were botting on mobile. And I, I was like, okay, wow. I think they do have mobile botting checks, but somehow this slipped through. And then I was like, so I'll like, how much GP are they making? And Jagex was like, oh, probably about 250 billion GP per month. Oh. And oh. <laughs> I was shocked that they even told me that because that looks horrible. But And they don't usually like tell me that specifically it, it depends on like how big the bot farm is like the bigger bot farms you know they they won't usually tell me how much they're making mm -hmm. but that i mean that's like what over a hundred thousand us dollars per month if they're selling that gold that's oh crazy is, it, is that why zora items are just uh, just <laughs> awful this, right now probably part part of part of why yeah i, I mean, mean also well play got nerfed yeah. 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 Blowpipe got nerfed and I'm Jagex has banned those bots. That was a long time ago. Um, yeah, I was I was gonna say, like, has the situation improved there or is it still the same? 
You know, honestly, I haven't checked in a long time. I think this is some behind the scenes of my content. Like I have a tip off email and people like tip me off to bots. Maybe I get 50 tip off emails a day. And a lot of them are bot farms I've already covered. And I like report bots to Jagex and report them in game. But like, I don't report bots full time 24 seven. So people will be like, yeah, I found a green dragon bot farm. And I'm like, yep, they're there. Yeah. <laughs> it will like, always I, be there. I've probably yeah. made five videos about them. And, you know, the area is not being watched closely. It never has been. Jagex has never implemented anything there. And yep, that's how it is. Like, I'm not going to sit there and report them. Yeah. I mean, even it, if you do, they're, they're going to come back. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it, it definitely would, does feel like thing. sometimes mm -hmm. like if it's kind of like a waste of time reporting these accounts. And I, I think um, like for me, I speak for myself, like probably one of the biggest bot farms I saw recently was at the Minnows um, at the Fishing Guild. And there were just so many accounts there. It was insane. And they were so efficient at catching minnows like they had it down to a t like i i literally became better at fishing minnows by watching what they were doing so i could like move on the same tick and stuff um and they all had like really high fishing levels and i was just looking at it just like there's no way nobody's reported these accounts it's so sus and it's just like why even waste my time reporting these guys because they're clearly you know they have been reported and they're not being banned for whatever reason it's it's definitely like it's a demoralizer, right? When you see that. 100%. Or like when I report a big farm to Jagex, they get banned. And then like a month later, I get a bunch of tips about the same bot farm. And I'm like, oh, so they're back. that's done. Like I got them banned for like a month, but they're yeah. back. You, you hold so yeah. much power. I swear if I had that power, I might, I might not be that responsible, man. I, I would be just constantly taking those farms. I was like, hey, they're back. They are back. Oh my god! But there's would, just so dirty. many, you know, to to check up on again, you know. I agree, but it's got to be satisfying seeing a bot farm, and then the next day you don't see one, and then maybe the next day they're back. But still, like that one day, satisfying. Oh, which brings me to a good question then. Like, what is kind of like the relationship then, you know, between between you and the and, and you know whoever uh, is in on, on the JMod side? Like, how like are they annoyed? that you like report this many or like is there like a nice you know balance between the the, the often the amount that you report and then them actually taking care of it right like what's the process like too you know yeah of course so back when we kind of set up my own discord channel i i joined the like official content creator discord super late like i thought everybody when i joined everybody else was in it and i was like oh i didn't know this existed but they set up yeah. um, like a channel for me and I started sending them usernames and saying like, hey, could you tell me like how much wealth was on these accounts and are they bots? And so the, the, it was like a good back and forth, I would say for like four or five months. Um, I would find a list of like, let's say 20 or 30 bots, uh, new and interesting bots that, you know, for example, um, in the fourth house dungeon, full Guthins bots, just killing red spiders, like weird what? places. Um, and... So I'll gather 20 to 30, I'll send the list. And then I would say like, sometimes they'll respond and be like, oh yeah, there, we found like 150 more. This is how much the average wealth was. We found their mule, it had four bill on it, whatever. Um, so that's kind of the process. I will say in the last like five-ish months, there's been like almost no response just because I think the team's been really busy. Um, the anti-cheat team probably, I think, I think I can share this. I was working on some RS3 problems with the accounts over there. I don't know exactly what happened, but oh, some you like, want to know RS3 what it was? Were rolled back or something? Yeah, yeah, they did an update, and then some of the servers got rolled back to like 2010 or something. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! <laughs> and then some of the accounts couldn't couldn't log in for like a month plus. I, I remember <laughs> a lot of my viewers. They're like, "Yeah, I was playing my Iron Man and all." I somehow just can't log in. It's been a month. I'm like, oh, damn, that's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, shit. Yeah. yeah that was, was that the big thing that affected RuneScape 3 as well? Or is that something Yeah, else? yeah, it was RuneScape 3 specifically. Okay, all right. Yeah, those, oh, some of the worlds it... got rolled back to 2011, straight up. But and... the, the people at the RuneScape 3 account linked to their old school also were affected too. So a little bit of both. But yeah, mainly RuneScape yeah. 3. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Crazy. 
Mm. By the way, boys, I, I kind of feel mm. like before we uh, jump any deeper into this rabbit hole, which I guess is going to go on for a while, uh, I yeah. think, Mint, it might be time that we sell out and perhaps, you know, set a like slash sub goal for this video. So, uh, well, I just deliver and, and deliver and deliver and deliver on it. Yes. So, what we say in Mint, what do you reckon, mate? So we were talking with Pugger before the podcast, very generous man, and apparently he has some very nice inside information on the duping that has been going on lately. And he said, hey, if this video gets a thousand likes, he's going to go ahead and upload a duping video on the recent dupes happening in Old School RuneScape. Only though if we had a thousand likes, of course. Guaranteed, yeah. right, Pugs? Yep, I can <laughs> confirm. Dude. Only if it gets a thousand likes, otherwise... Not uploading. Yeah, we're holding him for ransom. Yeah. Please like. And do you know what? You, you, you know what's funny, boys? He even went a step further and he said, you know what? The old screen skate podcast is sat around about eight point five K subs right now. So if this video managed to push it to nine thousand subscribers by let's go with a generous what's the day today? What is it? It's a Thursday. Yeah. So he said that if we get nine thousand subs by Monday, he will have the video out the following weekend. So <laughs> You know. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 we we no. The following weekend. You better follow through on this, Pugger. I swear oh, to God, oh, man. No, he went out of script. He went out of script. I, I, I actually can't do that because a lot of this stuff in the video, I'm, I am I got to wait for confirmation from Jagex to upload because they have to patch some stuff. A man of integrity. Oh, damn. Yo, that's... Right, don't worry um, about the light goal. Don't worry you know, about the light goal. I mean, the so, light goal, sorry. I don't know how many of... Uh, I, I don't know if you watch our podcast at all, Pugger, but um, a while back we had rendy on and um i made a comparison between rendy's content and your own content because you both kind of cover these sort of like you know <clears throat> like sort of dark topics of the community whether it be botting or bug abusing and you know gold selling and so mm -hmm. forth and um the comparison there was like you have a thriving successful youtube where you make incredibly interesting content where you actually have you know the numbers backed up from the actual developers of the game whereas rendy's kind of been you know painted as this black sheep of the community and he's recently been banned and it's just it's been a bit of a shitstorm for him and um i i basically said to rendy i was like you know it's like, if you were on good terms with Jagex, I wonder if your content could kind of become, like, streamlined, the same as Sir Pugger's, but obviously talking about bug abusing instead of bot busting. Um, so I was just wondering, like, you clearly have a good relationship with Jagex, and, um, like, where did that stem from? What? How do you think you got to where you are today, where they're giving you information which is behind the scenes, which is sensitive information? Like, how did you actually manage to get there? So I guess first, I wouldn't say the information they give me is that sensitive. And a lot of it could be figured out the hard way. So for example, like, are these accounts bots? Um, instead, I could just like report them and wait to see if they get banned. So yeah. some of the information, it's really not that sensitive. Like sometimes they're really helpful and tell me how much gold got removed from the game from a bot farm, but it's really not like super secret information. Um, but I would say the relationship kind of started um, with, again, me being added to the content creator Discord channel and then just saying like, hey, um, I reached out to a community manager at uh, Bolton and was like, do you think the anti-cheat team could like give me a few stats on content? And it would be a more positive um, thing for my videos because up until that point, I was like interviewing cheaters. I was like saying like, look at all these bots, Jagex does nothing. I was really railing on them. And I was like, well, what if we turn this around? What if, you know, we kind of work together more. I send you usernames, you send me some stats for content. And it's like, hey, we got X amount of GP banned from the game instead of, hey, look at all these fucking bots and how annoying it is. So that's kind of how I pitched it. And he was like, okay, maybe. Like Jagex is with a lot of things, it took like months to even kind of get that going. But eventually like I was reporting enough bots to them and they started responding. Um, I will say it's really like based on how much time they have because obviously what i'm sending them isn't a priority and when they don't respond i don't think like oh yeah they don't like me it's like they're doing other stuff and like i haven't gotten responses in a few months for example from some stuff and you know they're they're pretty busy and i report small fish yeah yeah mm -hmm. that, i think that's i think that's a good way of looking at it to be honest mm. so um 
like following up from that so how do you take that approach right so let's say you message jagex two months ago they haven't replied and then you have like another very important question to ask like do you just go ahead and like clog those dms up or do you just wait until they get back to you from the the previous question oh boy i clog those dms up (laughs) so hard there is like i think right now there's like a four month chat log of just me spamming like hey like can you get back to me oh look at these bots oh these bots i love some information and then like i reported a bunch of bugs and like was asking about like specific things i even made videos of the bugs like game breaking bugs and sent them to them and there was no response so then i sent them to the community manager and he responded he was like oh this is important but this yeah. is important yeah. <laughs> wait hold up so to a step forward real quick do, do they read the messages or are they just left unread the ones that don't get replied to on discord I don't, you can't tell you can't tell oh, you can't, of course you can oh my yeah, it god it doesn't have the read option like yeah oh dude it's That's... like it, again it's nothing on them though like they're busy and yeah. I, I, my messages are definitely not a priority and shouldn't be but, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I definitely spam them. This is some really good insight, actually. Good. Yeah. Um, I yeah. would not have thought that you would have to go above and beyond to try to better the game, but they are very busy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah they need to hire more staff for this kind of stuff, you know? Well, I've been saying that for years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they really do. They keep picking um, on their pennies, like, should I use that? It's like, yes, please. <laughs> well, I mean, if you guys didn't know, Jagex is, and we, I think we talked about this a couple of times, but Jagex is actually a traded company. So it's yeah. not like Blizzard, not that they're doing well right now, where they can just pour out this money. It's like, oh, we're yeah. going to buy Jagex, we're going to profit off them, and then we're going to go sell them. We don't want to spend money. So that's just, that yeah. just sucks. Right? Thank God we got these J-Mods, though. Yeah, they're like, they're like literally <laughs> our, our buffer, you know, from them just mm-hmm. like adding MTX and shit all the time. Yeah. I, mean, I, already, I've, I think that's a really good way, though, Pugger, of trying to like spin it in a positive light which you definitely do with your videos. Like, it, it, your videos are really well-crafted, I will add, by the way, because it's like, you're, you're covering subjects are very sensitive. People don't like bots. I have, like, I know people that despise bots to a point of, like, like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the anime? Do you watch anime, Pugger? You ever watched Goblin Slayer? No. no. Oh. It's basically, oh, no. it's basically about a guy that's, like, absolutely nuts, right? And he hates goblins. Like, the the only kind of like contrast or sort of like way of describing it in a RuneScape term is imagine a like a max level 126 and full inquisitor just in lumbridge destroying goblins with like dragon claw specs and shit like that's basically what that anime is um but it's like god i i went on such a tangent i forgot what i was saying yeah you're the tangent boy you you, you, you spin these things and it goes from like oh like when you're watching your video it's like a roller coaster it's like should we be really concerned about this like is this going to destroy the game and then towards the end of the video it's like there's always a positive outcome or most of the time and like i feel like you do that so well man and like your videos are genuinely a pleasure to watch because it's informative and it's not just like doom and gloom it's not like this is the end for us you know you do a good job i with really that. appreciate that thanks um I don't think Reddit agrees with you, but I'm happy you think so. <laughs> Reddit doesn't yeah, you agree know, with there's, much. There's always some drama, you know, like with with you from time to time. Like, oh, is this guy just like uh, behind the bots himself? So he's making yeah. videos, you know, or like some st- uh, crazy stuff like that, you know. I just yeah. released this video, which honestly was like half lighthearted trolling real world traders and, or and half of it was like, wow, this is like really easy to do and find in game. Like, and they are almost never banned, almost never, even though it's against the game rules. These are massive businesses making millions per year, and they're just not even banned from the game. And Reddit was like, oh, I'm pretty sure this is just an ad for gold selling. When like multiple times in the video, I said like, don't do this. There are risks involved. Also, like maybe you'll be banned, but also I don't show any site names at all. Like no specific names, nothing. And I'm just trolling people basically in game and they're like oh yeah and, and what that has, post has like 1500 upvotes and now that video is like being disliked like crazy and i'm like come on like what's what's the big deal like <laughs> yeah. the other it's argument hard, sadly. yeah yeah the other argument was like um like you're advertising gold but then on the other side of it people were also saying like 
and this video is bringing nothing new to us. And it's like, well, what am I doing wrong then if everybody already knows what I'm saying? Like, it's not like the RuneScape community is 12 and needs to be told that you can Google buy RuneScape gold, find a site and do it in five minutes, right? Like we're all 20 plus years old, basically. Like I'm not treating people like children. They know how to find this stuff. Yeah. That's why no. there's so many gold sellers, you know, because people buy them. <laughs> yep. it, Everyone's got a job. Yeah. It definitely does sound like a stretch. Um, but, you know, before this podcast, Pugger, I was just, you know, on the q and I was curious, what was it that got you so curious about, you know, the black market and botting as such? Like, what kind of pushed you towards that kind of content? I know what inspired you did you? PKing. Yeah, he did PKing before, like, Oh, hold on. Before you, you start, just I remember like I first knew you when you did like pretending to be like a hellhound or something, you know, something crazy. Oh, I remember those. Wilderness, right? Pretending to be a lever or whatever. You know, I was like, I was like, damn, how, like, what the heck? Man, that, by the way, if it's I can crazy. add that, that inspired yeah. like a whole generation of skull trickers, man. <laughs> <laughs> you get like slash web and stuff, skull trick and hardcores at yeah, Mage. Yeah, dude. like you made one video. I, I like clicked on it. He's like pretending to be a hellhound. He's like, Oh no, it doesn't work. And then that was the video. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then, yeah, then you turn into like the the documentary, you know, for like the underground and stuff. And then that picked up huge, you know, very fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, I used to do a lot of PKing, and on like the skull tricking slash pretending to be stuff can't really be at attributed to me. Like I saw an old video from like 2006 of someone pretending to be a chaos dude. And I was like, no way, that looks like fun. And I tried it and it worked like crazy. So I started making videos about it. And then I tried, you know, other things to skull trick people. But um, where was I going with this? Yeah. So, uh, oh, to boss. Yeah. 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 So when I was little, actually, I remember you could um, kill bots back when, you know, players actually dropped stuff when they died too in safe zones. Um, you could kill bots at the ranging guild by luring a guard between the target and the players shooting, and they would the bots would like click on the guard, and then the guard would attack them and kill them. And you could make like a lot of money because some of these bots had like twenty mil on them, right? And so my friends and I used to do that all the time. Huh. And so now picture me like I don't know three years ago now or something scraping the barrel for content. I'm a bad PKer. <laughs> Other YouTubers are like way better at PKing and growing a lot faster than I am, Torvesta. Um, but like, you know, I, I don't know what to do because like I've already pretended to be most NPCs in game. And so I start like targeting bots because you could kill bots in the wilderness. And I was like, let's just go for the robots. Like this kind of new. And those videos actually started taking off and it kind of reminded me of my childhood, you know, getting those bots in the ranging guild killed. Um, and then when I started doing that, people started reaching out. Like, yeah, I like I run 400 bots. And I was like, what? Who? I didn't know anybody ran 400 bots. And so like back then, I like I feel like a lot less was as public as it is now about like the scale and stuff like that about bots. And so I was like, I find this interesting. I'm sure other people would. Started interviewing people and. And I didn't realize like how advanced they were, like that bots were killing all the bosses in game, for example. And so it just kind of trickled out and the tip off email started, which was like the smartest business decision I think I've ever made. Um, Cause you know, I, like if I want to like look for something new, that's the first place I go. People send me tips about all this crazy shit. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, I have probably one last question for you, and then we'll get into more of the uh, the topics. So, and we cover this a lot with clients like Runelight, OS Buddy, if that still exists. Do you think that the botting problem started because we never had a central client? Right now that we're making one, do you believe that this will solve the problem? Even though apparently people can bot on mobile. Yeah. So. Yes, first of all, the the question about um, the botting problem in clients, that is uh, a huge problem. And I, Jagex finally identified that and then started making this client. Um, but yes, people can bot on mobile still. Um, Jagex, I'm sure, you know, will figure out a solution to that. 
uh, or already have, I honestly don't know. But in terms of the client, like that would be so amazing if, you know, there was one central client and that's it. And like you, anything that's not on that client is banned. Um, I will say, however, uh, I won't say too much or which sites do this, but there is something called mirror mode in botting where the bots run on like the vanilla client on your computer. So oh. that is a very popular big thing. Um, and I mean, I told Jagex that as well. Like, hey, people bought on the vanilla client too, heads up. Um, I don't know if that problem would be solved with it. Um, I, I think that they are trying to run like a centralized RuneScape client via Steam, uh, their Steam stuff. So maybe that would eliminate the the cla the classic client because the classic client doesn't have any sh anything like no features like whatever right so they're trying mm. to probably defunct uh like you know just defranchise that one or something how does the I'm um sure. yeah how does the mirror software function exactly does it just implement clicks on the vanilla client i'm guessing you know what i have no idea um <laughs> I've just been told that it's a thing where like mm -hmm. bots run on the vanilla client basically through some third party software. Um, yeah. Cause yeah. I, I'm just, I'm thinking it's because you know, probably. You, you get like auto clickers, right? And uh, I remember playing around with an auto clicker <laughs> a long time ago and I, you could get an auto clicker to basically do very to do very basic things in game for you. So if you're like clicking in the same spot, if you're like telling into Kami over and over again, if you're high alkin or something like that. Um, but you can do more and more with these auto clickers. Like for example, you could set it to like clean your inventory of herbs, uh, and then you can like speed up the time so you can do a whole inventory in like a tick, and it's just the entire is done, and then you just bank put it in um and I, I think at one point i even managed to make it do like a whole agility lap i can't remember what agility course it was and this was with like an auto clicker so that's like the most basic form of button you can do right so I, i'm assuming if it's done on the vanilla client and it is for the vanilla client it's probably just some kind of like more advanced auto clicker maybe that would be able to do it because I, I can't imagine if you're using the vanilla client, it's like you can sort of... I, I don't really know anything about, like, the back code and stuff, but I know that with the client, just, like, built in to have these programs in that do stuff for you. I don't imagine you can do that with the actual vanilla client itself. Um, I can just tell you right now, I won't say what it is, but there's, like, at least one very popular botting website I know of that uses Mirror Mode, and, like, they have all the same scripts that the other sites do, so... I don't know how oh, it works, but it's definitely possible with anything. So these are a lot more high tech than uh, Rakesy's auto. When oh, Rakesy, I'm sure. just I gotta oh, I gotta ask. When were you <laughs> auto clicking, man? <laughs> when, uh, when did you God. experiment with it? I think it was like, I think it was pre EOC. It was mm. like back in the day when dude. he was a rebel. When I was Ooh, a rebel, man. When I was RWT and staking every single day. Yeah, way back in the day. But like, it was super basic. Like the thing is, like. People still use that to this day. Like, um, only a few deadman modes ago, a lot of people get banned in deadman mode for auto clicking because they're too lazy to high out and they just they just run an auto clicker and it's like they can leave it for six hours, come back and they've gained like millions of XP. Um, a lot of people still use that, but I think it's quite detectable. I mean, I obviously never got banned for it, um, but it's it's like it does the exact same click on the exact same second in the exact same spot. So it's like if I I don't know anything about Jagex's like you know bot detection, um, but to like kind of turn that into a question for you, Pugger, um, do you feel like Jagex's bot detection is good enough for you know the sort of like the quality of bots that we have now? Like as time has progressed, obviously they've got more advanced. Do you think that Jagex's uh, bot detection is outdated at this point, or do you think it's sufficient? Like, how do you feel about that? You know, that would, to actually properly answer that, I would have to know how their system works. Um, and also, like, if they're really using it to the full extent of its ability. So I don't know anything about their detection system. I truly don't. Um, so I have no idea how, like, I don't know what they're capable of in detecting bots, but 
All I can tell you is I see a lot of bots that go undetected because they're in obscure locations. So like a couple of videos back, there was this cave horror bot farm and it, it, like in the edge of the cave where like not that many people go. And I had only found it because I got a tip for a year before that there was a bot farm there. And the same oh. accounts from the year before were still there and they had 80 oh million attack, strength and defense oh. experience each. And I was like, and, and I reported them to Jagex, like, hey, are these gold farmers? And they're like, nope, they're bots. We banned them. And I was like, Woo -hoo -hoo. what? <laughs> <laughs> what the yeah. hell, bro? I mean, they, million. Oh. Dude, they would have made a lot of money from that. Dude, like, with my current series, when I was like a med level account, I killed those cave horrors because you can get a lot of money through black masks and through seeds and stuff. Um, but to give you, actually, to give you a bit more insight into how the bot in system works, right? We recently had, I don't know if it was the Mod Matt K, I think it was the Mod Matt K podcast, where he basically said the botting, the botting software isn't outdated. The issue with it is that there aren't enough people who are qualified to look at it and be able to detect the bots while looking at it. Uh, basically, like, analysts that can actually look at the software and be like, okay, that's clearly a bot, that's clearly a player. Um, but, like, the reason I ask is, you know, it's like like you said, when you see an account which has 80 million in any skill and has been there for a year and not been banned, it, it's just, like, either it's not being detected and picked up by Jagex, or they can't prove that it is a bot. But mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. I, I just, you know, seeing how it's your area of expertise, I thought you'd have, like, a... A, a good understanding of whether it's a bit out of control or whether it's actually being dealt with but it seems like whenever you tip them off it gets dealt with which is yeah, it's a good thing for sure yeah like Pugger's more of a scouter he's not like he doesn't break down the game like the botters do you know right because like there's yeah. people that that like download the the software but they'll have no idea how it was actually made you know they're two different very different things you know yeah, yeah I, I don't have any technical background. I have no idea. But to talk about what you were saying with, um, do they have the capability to, like, do they not detect it? Or do they not, can they not prove that it's a player? I think I can answer your question because when I send the names in that haven't been detected, they're like, yeah, those are bots. So they can prove it. It's just not being detected. Right? Interesting. Like, I, I think logically that makes sense, right? Like, they have to yeah. manually check it they can't just find it sadly yeah yeah or yeah i, I don't know there's got to be something with hot spots too right like green dragon bots do get banned a lot but mm. are they really different from cave horror bots like no yeah. they're they're the same thing yeah yeah I like i remember we had a you know we've we've had podcasts with other guests like with you know like the people that made some crazy clients and stuff like that and and mom at k you know and like based on all those inferences it like comes down to, you know, people reporting uh, the, the bots in and then they like they kind of like analyze it and they kind of like just basically kind of see how it operates. Right. And then once they know how they operate, they can kind of scan, you know, uh, the overworld of the game and find things that are similar and then catch on to them. But until then, they don't they have no idea. Like, let's say it's a new one. Right. Let's say it's a new client, new script or whatever. They won't know. They they won't know what where it is to begin with unless they somehow got a report in, and yeah. then they like break it down again and then they do it again. Like so, it's an arms race. It's always like any time a new, you know, a new script is being made, unless they get a, a a wind of it, they they won't be able to detect it. You know, somebody's got to report it in. So so it actually is kind of important because even if, you know, not all of them gets you know banned right away, right? They they kind of need to know what's out there so they can start breaking it down from what i've gathered so yeah i mean um well sorry, guys i would w sadly yeah. we only have an hour mr pugger and mm -hmm. we still have a lot of topics to get through so i was thinking maybe we could jump into osr's black market now let's get um it. now i've not really done anything in the black market I'm, i don't know if i'm either too lazy or too afraid but for those who haven't done anything in the black market pugger could you give us a brief explanation of maybe what it is and what goes down in the in the darkness I guess, first of all, I, I'll just say, like, the information I have is basically all public, like, on the forums. And also, second, it's actually not at all a scary place. Like, it's just a bunch of RuneScape players who also are trying to profit from the game. Um, so, I, 
like black market i say that a lot too but it's really like it's not that nefarious right like it sounds scary (laughs) there i mean there are definitely instances where the black market has leaked into real illegal things but um the black market for anyone who doesn't know it's just basically buying and selling gold on runescape is the major thing or services for real money is against the game rules i i don't think it's illegal actually but it's against the game rules um, and so black market refers to the activities between players and businesses of buying and selling those things discreetly to try not to be banned. Mm, would that account for like account selling and name selling as well? Yep. Yeah. Well, so okay. name selling is tricky. I like, I don't know what the exact rule is. I think it flip flopped. Like if you buy names for in-game gold at one point, that was okay or is okay now. I'm not quite sure. Mm, gray areas runescape yeah. loves some gray areas uh you said that there was a real life crime sometimes attached mm. to the black market could you give us an example of, of an instance yeah definitely so over the pandemic i was trying to research things that were in the runescape community but also might like leak out in some ways to try to you know capitalize on the huge viewer increases then to try to expand the horizon out of runescape too So I was trying to relate it to the real world. And I was thinking about doing a video on RuneScape name selling. There's like, especially one person in the community who like has run some of the major name selling um, marketplaces. And so I interviewed him and then I was like, well, it's not just RuneScape names that are bought and sold. Like obviously um, nice names on Instagram, for example, rare names Mm -hmm. are bought and sold. And there's, um, they're bought and sold for a lot more than RuneScape names, even, you know, that you could sell something like Zeus on Instagram for like $30,000. Not exactly that, but, um, so I asked this guy who was big into the RuneScape names to introduce me to someone he knows, um, who's bought and sold Twitter and Instagram names. Um, his discord name was Rolex and he, we talked for like 45 minutes, um, had it a voice interview. He actually was like very pleasant. Um, told me all about this. And I asked like, oh, how do you get the usernames though from these websites? And he's like, oh, we buy them. And I was like, but don't a lot of accounts like Instagram accounts get hacked and then they resell them just like RuneScape, right? And mm-hmm. he was like, oh no, but we, we never do that. That's totally illegal. It's like, okay. Anyway, fast forward, like I want to say five or six months and um, I messaged Rolex and he never responded. And this RuneScape name seller messages me back and he's like yo and just links me to a um like a a court paper court records and rolex is one of the main um people uh in the whole twitter hack scandal and he is in prison now (laughs) (laughs) and i was like and like in in the chat with him on Discord, like we were talking all about OG users, the site that swaps these names, like real social media names. And like I was asking him all about it. And I was like, I wonder if the FBI like read my transcript with him on Discord. <laughs> Cause like I was talking about what he did, but like I I mean he hadn't committed those crimes yet. Um and he didn't admit mm. anything to me. But yeah, basically he was the one. The hacker who got into Twitter then like sent him the names and he would list them on OG users and sell them. <laughs> oh, that's that's insane. Oh, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to kind of like infer that there's a high chance that he's the one hacking or or he's in the group, you know, that does it, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But what's the FBI doing? Just going around finding people still in Twitter users, I mean, bro? They're master. Just- they're master Google users. You know, they've mastered the art of Google. You know? I mean, it's, man. it's definitely not a bad thing because, like, people have been able to get away... Like, people have literally been getting away with murder on the internet since it came out. And it's been so unregulated. And it's like, people just... They're just, you know... I, I feel like people can be their worst, like, version of themselves online and just get away with it, like, you know, no problem at all. So, that's kind of crazy. Dude, And I remember a while back, I had some guy message me on Twitter... And he was like, hey, uh, I noticed that you have the name Rakesy, and uh, we actually own the domain www.rakesy.com. Would you be interested in buying it from us for a $1,000? And I uh. was like, hell fucking no. <laughs> I was like, no fuck. I was like, I was like, fuck right off. There's no, no you way. You upload your videos. 
on I was like, what well, uh, absolute... I was like, there's no chance, bro. I'm not buying that domain. Would never pay you for that domain. No thank you. People... Like, people must make businesses out of that kind of stuff. Like, easily. like buying and selling names. It's crazy, man. Well, well you know what? Oh, Go sorry. I was just going to say, behind the scenes, what probably happened there was there's an automatic um, bot or, like, some sort of API script that checks to see if a domain name is taken and and checks a list of people with over X amount of subscribers on YouTube or Twitter. And then if it's not taken, they take it and then message you and yeah. say, like, hey, you want to buy this? And that's how they make money. Yeah, it's kind of like a crazy flip. Yeah. 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 Spe- well, speaking of regulations in the internet, um, Web 3.0, for those who don't know, maybe the future of the internet, internet with a paywall, decentralization, Spooky. and pretty much backed by the blockchain. And kind of a cool little fact, because we're talking about people selling names, there's actually people on the blockchain right now buying names of like big brands and companies so, like Walmart.com and stuff. Real quick, Mike, just for Wait. myself and other viewers that don't know, what exactly is a blockchain? What are we talking about here? Oh, well, I was going to get into that just just after, right? Um, right but I, let's do it. But people are buying like these domain name names. Like back when the internet bubble happened, all the, the internet companies started coming out and you know, people would buy like Amazon.com and stuff and they'd sell it and they make a lot of money because that company's now billions of dollars. So now we're seeing this happen again on the blockchain and the blockchain, oh God, I don't know if I'm credible enough to give an explanation, but let's just say things are permanently stored on the blockchain and then you can access it if you're on certain blockchains. And that being said, there's games on the blockchains that make real money. And we're talking about the black market, people making money off RuneScape, but it's illegal. Well, if you go into the blockchain and play these games, the whole point is to make money and to, uh, you know, thrive and live off it. Like a lot of the people in Venezuela right now are making about 30 an hour playing Axie Infinity. Uh, Now, Pugger Pugger wanted to cover this because it's a really, really cool topic. Uh, One, I just got to say, Pugger, do you have a better definition of the blockchain? Because I I don't know, man. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I'm like I'm not an expert. So at all. I, I've actually I've yeah. actually Googled it because I'm really curious and I can just read real quick what it says here. It says blockchain.com is a cryptocurrency blockchain explorer service. Uh, as well as a cryptocurrency wallet and cryptocurrency exchange exchange supporting mm-hmm. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum. They also provide Bitcoin data charts, statistics, and market information. So I'm still a little bit confused on what this is. Uh, if anybody watching this knows what a blockchain is, please give us like what is this? Are we talking about the matrix or like what yeah, are yeah, we talking yeah. about? Explain here? it in technical. <laughs> Honestly, we might and, like, talking about the matrix man because in these games on the blockchain items are permanent right they can't be reset like runescape and these rollbacks and there's actually games like the central land where you can buy currency buy property buy housing uh but i gotta hit it back to pugger what made you so interested in these blockchain games and making real world money off them yeah so my interest at first came when i heard venezuelans were transitioning out of runescape gold farming and to axie infinity right and and they were making i think it was like 30 dollars per day in axie infinity oh i thought it was an hour i almost had it (laughs) dude i might be playing that right now no no, (laughs) honestly when it was rising sorry when it was rising there were up 30 40 dollars an hour and you could breed things that would cost a hundred thousand right if you got lucky like a shiny pokemon but continue bugger yeah yeah it was super profitable still is pretty profitable and like so if you think about it, they make like let's say between six to nine hundred dollars per month on Axie Infinity. Well, if you're a RuneScape gold farmer, to make six to nine hundred dollars per month, you need to make one point two to one point eight billion GP per month, probably closer to two billion GP, which is a lot of gold in thirty days, especially if mm-hmm. you get banned. So it's definitely preferable for them to go to these pay-to-earn crypto games. That's how I got into it. And like the more I researched, the more I was like, well, this is, or this could basically turn into RuneScape, except like there is no black market and items are NFTs and um, the currency in game is a cryptocurrency. And the point is partly to have fun on the game. Like it's as addictive as RuneScape, but then also there's this kind of side thing where like, oh, people can actually make money. And it turns the game into something more than a game when you're, let's say it's like yeah it's 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 a true metaverse um mm-hmm. 
where you're playing a video game you might play for 12 hours a day and like something good happens and you pay rent with it and then you keep playing like you don't go oh. outside Not I, have necessarily a good thing, but. I have a few questions for you two then so so how does like supply and demand work in those kind of games like is it a finite amount of things that you can that that ex- exists or can you just endlessly supply it like 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 let's say a bot in runescape can you know or a player can yeah, no. so there are different methods of controlling the burn rate of their currency. So there's, there has to be, or for these games at least, they've set up a way mm-hmm. for currency to be burned so that supply decreases in some way as people also make the currencies, as supply increases. And the whole point is to try to almost balance that burn rate versus the earn rate, right? So that yeah. there's mm-hmm. not tons of currency flooding the market. Um, yeah. Axie Infinity's started to do that. They're like, they haven't mastered it yet because the more uh, currency is being created than destroyed. But for example, you can only play for, I think, three hours a day on an Axie Infinity account. Um, so, like, that's trying to control, you know, excessive amounts of earning, I guess. I like, I haven't played the game myself, but. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just but gotta I, say I, as well, I, yeah. Axie mm-hmm. Infinity started out as a below a million dollar market cap and now it's well above a billion dollar market cap and sadly i don't know the market caps for games i I really don't know i'd imagine nintendo probably has them beat maybe but for a game where it's a collectible game it's really simple to have over a billion dollars in market cap on that one game it might start making these triple a games go wow we only make I don't know, 60 bucks per game. We got to hire all these developers. We can open up something on the blockchain. Ecosystem works for itself. Uh, that could be the future of gaming, right? Honestly, any game that can make you actual money would probably be like a bit more fun, you know? Especially yeah, for was, the adults. Because I mean, then they'd be like, yay, you know, money. I was going to say, Tom, that I actually know people who've made 30000 a month playing this game. I know that some there there's that's some Axie Infinities that are so rare they sell for hundreds to a millions. I'm not sure millions, right? But it could get there, maybe. Uh, and you see how simplistic the game is with a billion dollar market cap. RuneScape's not a billion dollar market cap. They're not. No, no. It's not accessible. And, it's not as accessible and simple. No. And know? this team, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of people. It really isn't. May, maybe like 10, 20, 20 people on this team versus what RuneScape three hundreds of people in the same yeah. headquarters. Mm-hmm. So. This could be the future of gaming. Not only is it making people money, but if something as simple as this is over a billion dollar market cap, imagine if a triple A game moves over to the blockchain, right? And they make well, an actual insane game. Real question. That's the future. Yeah. Um, Who, so let's say theoretically you play this game and you get something that's worth $10,000, okay, or whatever. Who mm-hmm. who's buying that? Is it a person on the other end of the computer, or is it like the actual game itself will pay you out the money? Just think of the grand exchange. Someone That's else, it. right? Yeah. So the game is basically ran on the incentive to make money. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's not. Now, you don't you don't play this game to have fun. Well, you literally play this game to make money. I'd be happy. Money is fun. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, you go ahead, Pogger. I would just I would disagree. I don't think Axie Infinity, it's just not an attractive game to me. I do think there are plenty of people who play it for fun. It is known for being play to earn, and a lot of people in the Philippines, a lot of people in Venezuela play it to earn money, Mm -hmm. and that's the majority of the player base. But I'm pretty sure people do play it for fun as well, and that's probably the people buying those rares. Mm -hmm. Collectibles. They're pretty much collectibles at this point. So Are are they like NFTs then or something? Like you can collect them and then you have them outside of the game or is it just inside the game? Yeah. You can trade them anywhere. Actually, elaborate on the NFTs. I've heard heard a lot about it selling NFT like pictures and all that stuff. Like, you know, elaborate on that real quick. Like just for layman's perspective. Sure. So all the characters in Axie Infinity are NFTs and I guess... They, they have their own marketplace and you could probably trade NFTs outside of the game. I'm not actually sure if you can, but their only purpose is in the game. I mean, you could think of them as an asset if you buy a very rare one and you think more players are going to join Axie Infinity and then that asset value would go up. I mean, you could think about them in a lot of ways, but NFTs are non-fungible tokens, which basically means take the blockchain for Bitcoin. Everything on that blockchain is Bitcoin. Okay, every node on the block, every block is Bitcoin. Well, if you take Ethereum, Ethereum can have anything 
in those nodes. So if you create a node that is its own thing and there's only one, then it's a non-fungible token. It's, it's only one. Um, and it's hard to explain, I guess, but so, so I guess there's technology where you can create something virtually now that will always be unique in 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 the online mm -hmm. sphere. Like it's just yeah. never duplicated is the point. So it covers right. art, it covers collectibles, uh, even it covers real estate. So say if you have your house as an NFT token, you can trade it on the market, right? There's actually a lot of startup companies starting to get into that. People have already traded. And I was talking about Decentraland, Sandbox, two other games where it's like Minecraft, but real work uh, currency. And you could buy property, buy property, right? With the currency, you could sell it. This currency actually, uh, the property actually went up 100x this year on some of these uh, games, especially Decentraland. So if you have this property and then you could put your NFTs, your non-fungible tokens, say it's a picture or maybe it's a game item, right? We're talking about, uh, actually, we talked about that before stream. So, so it's it's just anything you can put on the blockchain. So so and let's then, say let's say some like let's say you have an NFT of a picture, but then there's another NFT of the same exact picture. The only way to distinguish them would be what? Like the ID or something, like you know, the properties of the file or something. There's only one. That's the beautiful part. It just pops on the blockchain. Now you could have the same picture on another blockchain, right? Because there's That's what I'm saying. Uh, That's what I'm getting. Yeah, there's CryptoPunks and there's um Ah, sorry, there's uh, V Chain Punks, right? And these are huge collectibles, and they got DJ Apes on this other blockchain. So they're all just collectibles. It's it's a very new market. So there's a lot of people like they don't understand it as well. But yeah, that yeah. that's the thing. You could upload your your JPEG. Say if you want this picture, say you made something and you haven't sold it yet, you could just slap it up on every blockchain and then you could bid on it if you want, or I you mean, start a collection. The the trouble I have with this stuff is when. When it's so incredibly difficult to explain it, just the basic concept of what it is, I'm out. I'm just like, I'm not putting my money anywhere near something that can't even be explained simplistically. Like, why would I spend money on a few pixels on my screen that bounce around? Like, and I, under I understand that coming from like the collectible side because I'm a collector myself, but I collect real physical things. You could call me an old school collector. I don't know. But like, Tom, the issue Tom, I have Tom. with this, the issue I have with this is like, it just seems like a scam, bro. If you can't explain it simply, I'm I, not putting I money did. into it. I did. Bro. No, I, I get, just said I get you it. Get I get it. Voice. I mean, I, get it. Mm -hmm. I understand that like with, with new markets and stuff, it's like the exact same as like what it was with Pokemon when it first came out. People were like, why would this huh. ever be worth money? No, no. Let me, let me say my piece real quick. I know. And I, know, I will, I'm, I'm getting to it a second. Yeah, let me say mm -hmm. my piece. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I understand yeah. this is new and a lot of the time collectible things are tied to nostalgia, which is in defense of this, whatever this is. And it's like, if there are people out there that are genuinely having the time of their lives right now playing this game and collecting these like fish looking Pokemon things, whatever they are. And it's like in 20 years time, they're going to be like, oh man, I, I love my Oogla Boogla fish that I had from Axie Infinity and it's $20,000 right now, but I can buy it and relive that nostalgia by looking at it on my screen. Like, it sounds like a massive stretch in my mind, but there are people that have that kind of money and like, maybe it will be worth something, but like until it can be very simplistically explained where it's no ifs or buts or no stuttering, I'm out. I'm not, I'm not touching this. I will humor it, but I, there's no way I'm chucking even a penny into this. Not it, a chance. It is simple. Like I said, the simplest way to explain it is that you just take an item in real life and you put it on the internet. That's it. So say the Mona Lisa, you could literally div divvy that up into different NFTs. You can own a piece. Now you have this little picture online, but it equates to the Mona Lisa. Just like I said, if you bought NFT of, of a property, right? Like a house, you own the house. You have all the benefits of owning it in now it, it, that's yeah that's all it is we're all familiar with runescape and people buy party hats for thousands of dollars it's the exact same concept it's just yeah. a way to verify those digital assets so you're actually tying the digital asset down to a block yeah that's what i want to know yeah, exactly and mm -hmm. it also enables you to trade that without like meeting up with the player in game for example you can just send it to their account and then they'll have it so NFTs in video games really just make the RuneScape black market in other video games much more secure and much easier.
that's that's all NFTs yeah. are doing in those mm-hmm. games. So so in the same sense that that people want to buy something that's super rare and valuable in RuneScape, they want to in the NFT games too. It, yeah, the technology just helps that process so like why would someone own an axie that's super rare and worth a hundred thousand dollars why would anyone buy a pixelated hat in runescape that's worth five thousand dollars right like exact same concept yeah yeah but there's okay. uh, like i think i'm just like trying to explain to rixie that there's like a difference in like nfts where you own something in real life and like an nft or like a collectible in well, in the that- game Right. So there's not really a big difference, right? Because if you own an NFT that has any sort of value, you could sell that value. It's real life currency right there. Right? Well, no, I'm, but what I'm saying is Rake is just not like he's not accepting the idea that like if you NFT, well, he doesn't like a pixel understand, item, you know, <laughs> crypto, which is fair, right? It's new. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I don't I, crypto, I don't have any crypto or any yeah. Yeah. research on that kind of stuff. Well, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are widely behind it, but um. Yeah. We're doing yeah, a shit job I, of explaining it, which is also yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, like, that's, I, that is excellent. the issue here. I, like, there's excellent. nothing which is finite well, no, with I, this. I, I understand it at a basic level, you know, it, it makes intuitive sense. Yeah. Like, the comparison to, like, RuneScape Party Hats is probably the one thing that I do understand with this. Um, I, I guess the only difference is, is, in my eyes, I see it like, well, Party Hats never came into the game being worth something in the first place, more or less. It was never something which was intended to be worth something down the line. It just inherently and naturally, over time, acquired wealth as time passed on, and people were like, hey, that's a really old item that came from a specific event in RuneScape's history, which people now want for whatever reason, because it's a sign of wealth or because it looks nice. Um... I guess it would be interesting to say where this ends up. Um, I, I, my two cents on it. I personally don't believe in it, as you can probably tell. But I mean, it doesn't help that there's no finite explanation for exactly what this is, and I, I, I don't just, buy into things that can be explained simplistically. You know, definitely okay. don't have to buy into it, Rexy. Oh. I just, just, a, just, I'm gonna try I, one more time here. Um, it's literally just you take something and you, and you put it and you, and you put it online, just like say your money's already online. Right, it's not like a digital dollar doesn't have an inherent value. You go to the ATM, you get it. Right, just like if you have a house, you own the house in, in an online token. You could trade it way easier, uh, probably less fees, and you get everything from it. Like you can own a sound clip and then get royalties from that sound clip. It's just anything as an online token, just a coin of something. You're just turning something into a coin that you can trade. Yeah. That's it. I, I I get that. I understand. And that. then it's I, facts, you know. Right. It'll be interesting yeah. to see how this this space transpires over the next couple of years. Right. God, I, Sir Pugger, man, I know that you have to go. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Dude, I wish this was a longer one. I hope that you can come back in the future of more time on your hands, man, because, yeah, God, I feel like there's... come back. <laughs> yeah, what... Easy. Dude, I really, honestly, eventually, there's a lot of eventually. stuff I wish that we covered with you, but I know that you're a busy man busting bots and so forth. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. Uh, do you have anything that you would like to shout out or anything like that to the uh, people watching? Um, no, thank you so much for having me and shout out to everyone except Reddit. <laughs> <laughs>